Welcome to my lecture. In today's class, we'll be starting the organic chemistry series. Here we'll be taking a look at what is organic chemistry, homologous series, functional group, and naming of organic compound. In our further, in our further series, we'll be taking a look at each member of the homologous series. What is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry is the study of the structure, properties, composition, reaction, and preparation of organic compounds. Organic compounds are chemical compounds in which one or more atoms of carbon are covalently linked to atoms of other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, or even nitrogen. Few compounds such as carbonates, the carbides, and cyanides contains carbons, though they are actually classified as inorganic compounds. The most common example of organic compound is actually the hydrocarbon. We also have abundance of organic compound in the body of living organisms such as the carbohydrates, the fats and oil, as well as the proteins. Let's talk about the homologous series. Imagine the planet Earth with many families. Each family has unique genes. This gene may be regarded as the functional group and they determine the properties of this family. So let's define homologous series. These are a group of organic compounds with the same functional group, just as I mentioned before, as having a unique gene. They have the same basic structure, similar chemical property as a result of the unique functional group. And members of the series can be branched or or branched and they differ by a molecular formula of CH2. Let's take a look at the family or homologous series arcane, for example. The first member of this family is the methane. The second member is the ethane. The third member is the propane. Now, from the structure of the first member, which you can see being displayed, and the second member, which is ethane, you see the difference between the structure is CH2. The first structure is CH4, the second structure is C2H6. If you do a little subtraction, you realize that the difference between the first and the second member is CH2. So, member of homologous series actually differs from each successive member by the formula CH2. As I mentioned earlier, a functional group is an atom, group of atoms, or bond inside a substance that is responsible for the substance's unique chemical properties or reaction. Let's take a look at the various homologous series, the akin, the akins, the akines, the alcohol, esters, and the aldehydes. Alcohol is also regarded as the alkanol. Now, take a look at the akin. The functional group is actually a single bond. Take a look at the akins. The functional group is a double bond. Take a look at the akine. The functional group is a triple bond. And these are actually unique in the naming of organic compound. Other groups such as the ketones, the esters, the carboxylic acid or the alkanoic acid, the amine, the amide, which is currently being displayed. Now look at the ketones. We have the CO as their functional group. Look at the aldehyde. We have the CHO as their functional group. And these are actually useful in the naming of organic compound. Now let's go into the naming of organic compound. What are the rules for naming organic compound? One, locate and name the longest carbon chain as the parent chain. Two, find out the functional group. And the surface of the name reflects the type of the functional group present on or within the parent chain. Three, Start counting from the side that will give the functional group the least possible number. Other um, rules will be mentioned as we apply them. Let's apply these rules in naming organic compound. Let's take a look at Let's apply the rule that we just mentioned for naming organic compound. Let's take a look at this compound. Now, this is C. Three uh, hydrogen compounds will be attached, and this and this. Oh. Now, this is the condensed form, the same thing as this. But we are going to be writing um, our compound in this format. Alright, but you can decide to expand it a bit for better understanding. Now, how do we name this? The first rule is that pick the longest chain as the parent chain. 
All right, so how do we get the longest chain here? We can decide the function from there. One, two, three is the longest chain. One, two, three is the longest. One, two, three. So any one we decide is the same thing. Now, let's decide since we have this, let's just pick this as the longest chain. Then the next thing that you will do is to determine which functional loop. Now, in this case, basically there's no functional loop. It's an arcane uh, series, homologous series, because it's a single bond. You can check the table the previous table for yourself and see. Now, after that, the next thing, let's now count from the side that will give the branch chain the least possible number. So let's count from here one, two, and three as our compound. So if we decide to count from this, we still have the branch chain as carbon two. So we can now name it as the branches they are the, the, the two branches they are actually present at carbon two, so we cannot name it as the metal group is present in carbon two, which is these two. Another metal group is present in carbon two, which is these two. How many metal groups do we have? Two. So that is dimethyl. So we cannot put like two two dimethyl is actually propane. Propane. Two two dimethyl propane. Propane is the third in the homologous series of the arcane. So it's 2, 2, 2, 2, diamethyl, 1, 2, 3, which is propane. It's a very simple one. We can quickly go through it again. Now let's name this. We have the longest chain, which is a simple one. This is a very quick one. It's a straight chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the fifth. Um, compound in the homologous series of the arcane. The functional loop in this case is the single bond. So the fifth compound in the functional loop is actually the pentane. Now let's go through the third um, question, the third compound, and let's name this. Now, in this case, first, as usual, pick the longest chain. So how do we get the longest chain? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, if you decide to answer, you still have eight. So this is actually the longest chain. Now the second rule is that you must count from the side that will give these branches the branches the least possible number. So if you count from this side, the branches will have a large number one, two, three, four, five, and this will have seven. So let's count from this side that will give the least possible number. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we now realize that we have two retired group at carbon 2, which is this 2 to indicate that we have two retired group at carbon 2. Now, in carbon 4, we also have two retired group at carbon 4, indicating another 4 4. How many retired group do we have in total? 1, 2, 3, 4, which is tetra. 1 is actually mono, 2 is di, 3 is tri, and 4 is tetra, 5 is penta. Alright? Now, since we have two metal groups here, we have two, two, we have another one, two, two, which is tetra metal. Now, what is the longest chain? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, octane. Number eight in the homologous series of arcane is octane because the, it's a single functional group. There is no uh, real functional group in this case, it's just a single one. Alright, so please take note of that. Now, this same question, let's introduce a double bond functional group into this same question. How do we now know it? Now the first one as usual is to determine the longest chain. In this case it is still 8. Now remember the second rule. You must count from the side that give the functional group the least possible number. If there is functional group and there is branches, the functional group is the priority. So you must count from that side. So in this case, instead of counting from here, because of this functional group that I introduced, we will now count from this place. All right. So we can now decide to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Let me write it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Please take note, this is incorrect. I'll make it correct. I think I just noticed that it's incorrect. All right. Now, let's now uh, name this compound. We have the branching at carbon 5. We have 
double again at Canon 7. So we now have 5577 Tetra Tetra Meta. Now, this is not an obtain, there is a functional loop here. So we can decide to change this because of this double functional loop, it's not obtain. Now, another thing that you can name it, instead of just naming it obtain, you can decide to name it arc. This double bond is present at carbon 2. Two in to so this is actually the most or the most appropriate name for it, but this is also correct. Two uh, five five seven seven tetra meta octane, but the most correct one is actually opt two in, indicating that the double bond is present at carbon two. Now let's name the next one that we have in our list. We just take a look at. 10 compound in our subsequent video in the part 2 of the naming of the organic compound i will give name so many compound and get to familiarize or get you familiar with all the functional group that is present in organic chemistry if not or maybe most of the functional group now let's take a look at this one this is in this case you have a new functional group this is what oh is actually the arcanol OL all functional loop. Always look, look, go back to that table. Take a proper look at the examples on the table and you realize that the examples that are there and the names that are there, you take note of the suffix that is attached to each um, functional group. For example, we have the carbos, uh, zinc acid or the arcanoic acid always ending with metanoic acid, the propanoic acid, because of the COOH what functional group, we have the aldehyde and various other functional groups. So let's quickly take a look at this. Alright, let's take a look at this. We have one, two, three, which is in this case is what the propanol. Alright. Propane, but because of this functional group, it's now it no longer belongs to the uh, arcane group. Now belong to what the Akanol group. Akanol group is a different uh, homologous series. This functional group now determines the formula, the chemical properties of this word compound. Let's take a look at the next one. In this case, we also have a double bond present in this. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Which side do you name it from? Always name from the side that will give the functional group the least possible number. So I will name it from the side. One, two, three, four. Now I can just put this uh, simply put this as what the routine. But because the functional group is present at carbon one, the most appropriate answer will always be root one in. Right? The next one we also have the compound. In this case, we have two functional groups. We have the double bond and we have the OH group. Now, in the reactivity series, we always give priority to the one that is more reactive. In this case, the OH group is more what reactive and has what the priority of value. So this one will now be the functional group in this case. This type of other functional group is present. If we have the COOH present here now, this one will be the functional group. This type we have this in our part two of this video. I'm going to name more organic compound where you see this present and also the hydroxyl group or the oil group also was present. So we we'll name a more uh, complex compound in this case. All right. So let's really name this because we are taking this as a functional group. You can just name for here one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, we now have the OH group as a functional group uh, uh, taking the carbon one position. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the longest chain. So five is what pent. All right. Now. Pent, but we have the double bond group, which is the in group present. So, in what carbon? Carbon what? Four. Remember, this one is always like this, has this as a functional group. But because this is present, this E N E will now be changed to E N O L. This is present, and this is also what present. This is present in carbon four. Which we have pent for e no 
please just take note. If this is a very simple concept. If you get used to it, you will always need any organic compound, whether you are familiar, uh, familiar with it or not. The next one that we have here is actually a compound that is carrying what the carboxylic what functional group or the oic oic acid. Arcanoic uh, acid homologous or series. Alright, let's take, quickly take a look at this. Always, the first thing is pick the one, uh, take the chain that has what the, take the longest what chain as a parent chain. In this case, what is the longest chain? I have one, two, three, four, five. Remember to count from the side that have the functional group. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. So we have two methyl group at carbon four, which is four, four dimethyl. Alright, now this is 5 is pentanoic acid. This oil acid is as a result of this COOH. So go back to that table, go back to the table and look at the names of various functional groups present there. Alright, now we have number 9, which we have, please take note, this is CLH2. Now, it simply means this. First carbon atom here has two hydrogen attached to and one chlorine group. Alright? So this one I can try to put this as ClH2. That means Cl and the two hydrogen atoms attached to this one. Carbon atom. Alright? So ClH2. You have H uh, CH2, CH2, CH2. We also have CH2. CL. This again, this last carbon atom here, we have two hydrogen attached to it and we have what? One chlorine. So since we have one chlorine and as the first carbon and as, as the last carbon, we can try to count from anywhere. So let's just count from this side. One, two, three, four, five. We can decide to also count from the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. Now, once we do this counting, chlorine is present at carbon one. Five. Even if you count from this side, chlorine group is present at carbon 1 and carbon 5. So we now have 1, 5, and you put your hyphen, dichlorine, meaning that there are two chlorine atoms. Then the 5 means that it's actually what you can say. Remember, there is no double bond. So as soon as there is double bond, if I decide to add double bond to this, I can have put pens in, indicating that there is what double bond. While the last group that I'm going to name here, Let's see, this is a very simple compound. Let's take a look at it if you have any functional group. I can't see anyone, just a single one or two saturated hydrocarbon. Alright? Now, the next thing you should do is take a look at the longest chain. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is this the longest chain? Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So from this, you can realize that this is actually the longest chain, which we are going to be as as what? Parents, what? Chain. Now, once you have done this, you will now count from the side that will be this branch, this entire group, the least possible number. So if I count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, the entire group will have 4. But if I count from here 1, 2, 3, the entire group will have 3. So I always count from all this side because it will give the least possible number. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, 6 in this case is a z. Six in this case is hexane. So we now have three metal group, which is uh, metal group at the carbon three, which is three metal hexane. So this is actually an introductory class to the naming of organic compound. In our part two of naming of organic compound, I'll be going straight directly to naming of organic compound. I'll be naming various compounds involving various functional groups. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.